Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Aram. Welcome to the Biro channel. Now, this video is about explaining how to work with a Biro or as a coach. Your problem is you have athletes and you don't know if these athletes are compatible or not. How do you find out? The way I do it as a coach is that I start the app, turn on the sensors and go to signals mode. The signals mode for me is very interesting because it shows me over a timeline on the bottom how many how much force a person applies and what the angle is so how how the handles move now what this what this mode allows you to do is shape the handwriting of an athlete see i'm rowing right now so on the bottom you see the force curves this would be a plateau based curve This would be a late peak, and this would be an early peak, and there are various shapes. So I would like to have all my athletes influence about the same way. Personally, I think the plateau is the best shape, but it is better to go with what everybody in the boat can quickly do. So if everybody is good with an early peak together, it is individually speaking not as effective but it's better to do, have everybody do the same thing because then the forces are being matched. And this is still faster than a couple people being less effective and a couple people being more effective, if that makes sense. So I would start by letting an athlete row and say, okay, you're creating a, an, a late peak now. What I want you to do is change to an early peak. So that person may wonder, how do I do this? And we'll just work harder at the catch. Ah, and that person immediately now sees, oh, my force curves went up early now at the catch and at the finish there's less. Personally, as a coach, I like to go for the plateau. The reason for that is very simply, because if I don't create peaks in my acceleration, I don't create massive resistance in front of the boat, because our boat is a displacement, a displacement hull. So I have to make sure that the acceleration I create is as consistent and constant and smooth as possible. Hence, a plateau curve makes more sense because what this does, I accelerate the boat now, the boat becomes quicker, the airfin here becomes quicker, and now it will travel away from my blade. Now, if I manage to keep the same load on my blade, measured by the, force, uh, by the strain gauge here, then it means I'm adding consistently more acceleration, but I'm not overdoing it. So a plateau curve would look like this. It can have a slight late peak. That's okay in low steady state because a true late peak curve looks like this. That is not usable, but something like this is usable. The idea is that if you have 10, 20, 30 athletes, I would start by putting them on the by rower and letting them play with it. First, they need to get accustomed to that. You need to understand how your motion creates a response by the mechanic system and by the electronic system. So at the beginning, for example, your athletes may feel something like a lack of resistance at the catch. It, it, the curves will look a bit like this. You see a little wobble at the beginning before the main curve starts. Why is this the case? Every time you add a vertical motion to a horizontal motion, the strain gauge, which only picks up horizontal uh, resistance, picks up less force. Now in the boat, it's the same thing. Vertical motion of the blade will make the boat go slower, not faster. The only thing that propels the boat is horizontal connection. So we need to make sure that we are dead stable with our hands at the catch and during the drive. If our hands wobble up and down, with loose connection, the blade may go through the water quicker, but the boat is not going to accelerate as quickly as it could. Now, in order to get rid of that play at the catch, um, some people feel on the by rower, you have to stabilize your hands vertically. The way you do this is that you stabilize here, your armpit and your hip joint, so your pelvis. And that means your hands mustn't go up, your upper body mustn't go up. You should be absolutely that stable locked at the beginning. The second point is that some athletes may actually have weird curves like these. Look at my force curves. You see, 
they will probably complain and say, I don't know, my left side doesn't pick up as much resistance as my right one does. The reason for that is that on a bar bow, you have to be very precise with the timing. So when you start to pick up force, if I pick up with my right hand ahead of my left hand, what happens is that I'm taking away the potential resistance. These two oar handles work completely independently on one joint resistance unit, which is that combo of air fan, um, a heavy rotation disc, and the magnetic brake system. And if I, take a, if I start earlier, I take away resistance. And the same is true on the other side. If I start too early with my left hand, so the grain force curve will go up ahead of the right one, the right one goes pretty much empty. Now some people claim the machine is broken, but it's actually the technique that's broken. The thing is the boat never gives you that kind of feedback. You don't feel it in the boat. What the boat will do is kind of swivel to one side. It will not tell you that, hey buddy, this is ineffective. Why don't you catch it at the same point of time? The biro does precisely that. So this is what a biro is more effective for um, technique training. These are things you can train better on a bio rower than in the boat. And the thing is, what you shape is muscle memory. So in the boat, you don't even have to think about catching earlier or later with one side. Now the question is, why do people even catch earlier with one side? It has a lot to do with uh, symmetry in the body. Some people simply are asymmetric. I say most people are. And another thing is, especially experienced scholars, we are all taught to have our left hand farther away from the body than the right hand. Now the effect of this is that when we do this, you feel that, aha, now we don't scratch our knuckles. So nobody wants to have bloody knuckles. You experienced rowers all know that. The solution, however, is not to say I'm just going to pick up the stroke with my right hand ahead of my left hand. Because this will create massive asymmetric loads in the body. So what we have to do is make sure we time it in such a way that we are stable here. It is okay to overpull and overpull with the left then. So let me exaggerate the curve. To do this, realistically, it's going to look like that. You see slight deviations in the curve, but not much. And that is precisely where we need to be in terms of how to move the boat the most effective way. If athletes, if you have athletes who don't understand it and say, wow, the machine is wrong, I'm right, then okay, let's do the following thing. Just try to catch with the left hand deliberately earlier than with the right hand, and then you start to feel the difference. Let's say the athlete starts out like this. Left hand, no resistance, it's all broken. Okay, then reverse it. Oh, uh, no, left hand has all the resistance, the right hand is nothing, the machine is broken again. No, it's your technique. Okay, um, so now you let that person roll cross hands. It's a drill you can really only do on a bi rower. Why cross hands? Because you leave your muscle memory pattern. If you leave your muscle memory pattern, you will now sense and feel when do I have resistance here and there. And that usually never happens in the boat. The thing is that sometimes we need to break these muscle memory patterns in order to make athletes aware of what's going on. So here we go. These are my tips for how to get started with athletes when they work on the bio row the first couple of sessions. It's important to understand ultimately you will need to play, you will need to give athletes time to play with this. Now if you have any questions contact us info at barbo.com or get coaching info at armtraining.com and I'm very much looking forward to get your feedback. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.